A big rescue operation in South Wales as 400 people are taken off a pleasure cruiser. All 400 passengers on the pleasure cru cruiser Prince Ivanhoe, which went aground this afternoon, have been taken off safely. The Prince Ivanhoe was driven aground near Port Einan after she started taking in water. One person is reported to have died of a heart attack after being rescued. Helicopters from RAF Broadie and RAF Chivener stood by to help, but most people were brought off in small boats. David Williams reports. The Prince Ivanhoe is lying partly submerged a few hundred yards from the beach at Port Einan, a beauty spot on the Gower Peninsula. Well, monitoring the rescue communication system, we heard that the last passenger was taken off the stricken vessel at about ten past five, and reports coming in then said that the ship itself was settling slowly. Shortly afterwards, another report said that the ship was in fact sinking rapidly. And from what we can see, the water appears to be only a few feet away from the aft deck. A flotilla of small boats and the ship's life rafts carried the passengers ashore. One of those rescued, a man in his 60s, collapsed of a heart attack and died. The hull of the ship had been holed by submerged rocks. And passengers spoke of a grinding noise and water pouring into the engine room. At one stage, the captain lost the use of the ship's engines, but later power was restored and the vessel was driven onto the beach where the rescue operation began. There was some panic on board and children were screaming, and we've just heard that the ship has sunk. Leaders of the three rail unions are still talking with the management of British Rail about their pay award. They adjourned for a while this afternoon while BR revised its offer, but later they returned to continue negotiations. Details of the new offer aren't yet known. But the unions are still pressing for the full 11% awarded to them last month by an independent tribunal. Flights to the United States from Britain are facing increasing delays because of an American air traffic controller's strike. Passengers at Heathrow Airport have had to wait up to three hours for departures and incoming planes are also being delayed. President Reagan has threatened the striking controllers with a sack if they don't resume working within two days. From Washington, Martin Bell reports. The strike had an immediate effect with one airline grounding all its morning flights, but not so extensive an effect as the controllers would have liked. Mainly it was the short-haul flights that were cancelled. Most of the long-haul flights, distances over 500 miles, were kept flying. Supervisors in the control towers were helped by controllers who defied their union strike call. And the administration at once took a very hard line. The president himself promised the controllers they'd be fired if they didn't go back to work. At one point in these negotiations, agreement was reached and signed by both sides, granting a $40 million increase in salaries and benefits. This is twice what other government employees can expect. It was granted in recognition of the difficulties inherent in the work these people perform. Now, however, the union demands are 17 times what had been agreed to, $681 million. This would impose a tax burden on their fellow citizens, which is unacceptable. As passengers make what arrangements they can, a number of other moves are being made against the union, including the impounding of its strike fund and possibly the arrest of its leaders. The government is taking the union on in an important test for future public sector bargaining and what looks also like an attempt to break the union. The Merseyside police have identified the driver of the police vehicle which hit and killed a disabled man during the Toxteth riots last week. The policeman, a constable, has been interviewed and more eyewitnesses have been asked to come forward. David Moore, who was 22, was struck in Lodge Lane in Toxteth last Tuesday night. This report from Richard Duckenfield. Forty police cars and vans were operating in the area where David Moore was found and police say any one of them could have been involved. Most were being driven across rough ground in the dark, and they were being bombarded with bricks, pieces of rubble, and petrol bombs. And that was why it had taken the investigating team five days to trace the driver of the vehicle that hit Mr. Moore. They say the vehicle was identified by forensic evidence, supported by eyewitness accounts, but there was nothing significant in the delay. Witnesses say Mr. Moore, who sustained multiple injuries, was dragged for about 11 yards after he was hit. He was found near an alleyway leading to a small housing estate. His family say he was walking home after visiting his sister. 
the inquiry team now have to decide if the police driver might have committed a criminal offence before a report is sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions. Another prisoner has joined the hunger strike at the Mays Prison near Belfast. 25-year-old Liam McCloskey, who is a member of the Irish National Liberation Army, refused breakfast this morning. McCloskey was sentenced to 10 years on arms charges with Kevin Lynch. Lynch, who died on Saturday, was buried today at Dungiven in County London, Derry. And despite appeals from his family, INLA gunmen turned up to give a graveside salute. Peter Gould reports. As the coffin was carried from the family home, there was no sign of the paramilitary escort. It was absent at the request of Lynch's parents. They followed behind the coffin as it was carried the short distance to the nearby Catholic church for the funeral service. The cortege was met by the parish priest who had also been opposed to any paramilitary presence at the funeral. But after he and the coffin entered the church, the INLA Guard of Honor assembled outside. Army helicopters hovered overhead, the closest the security forces came. Then, under the cover of trees in the graveyard, came the traditional ceremony as six gunmen fired a volley of shots. The crowd applauded, but the priest said he was annoyed because the INLA had broken an agreement not to fire shots at the funeral. At least 20 Iranians have died in two separate bombings on the inauguration day of the country's new president. In the western town of Kerman Shah, 13 people, including two children, died when a bomb exploded in a square. And reports are still coming in about an explosion in Tehran. At least seven are thought dead. The new president, Mohammad Ali Rajayi, who was installed in the presence of the Ayatollah Khomeini, has had his officers 200 yards from where the Tehran bomb went off. In Poland, hundreds of cars, trucks and buses jammed the centre of Warsaw today in a protest at food shortages. Thousands of people lined the streets in the biggest demonstration yet organised by the Free Trade Union Solidarity. Many vehicles carried anti-government slogans demanding more food and accusing the authorities of the biological destruction of the Polish race. Union organisers feared the protests could lead to trouble and there were some scuffles when drivers tried to reach Communist Party headquarters. Talks there between the government and Solidarity have now broken up without any agreement. The government accused some union members of exploiting the situation for anti-communist ends. President Sadat of Egypt has had talks at Downing Street with Mrs Thatcher. He said afterwards that he'd been looking forward to meeting the Iron Lady, as he called her. The Foreign Secretary, Lord Carrington, also took part in the talks which centred on peace initiatives for the Middle East. Gerald Butt reports. The Prime Minister greeted the Egyptian leader on his way to Downing Street. The talks themselves concentrated on how the European countries, and Britain in particular, could help to break the stalemate in the Middle East peace process. The Camp David talks have lost their momentum, so President Sadat is hoping that Lord Carrington, at present the EEC chairman, might be the man to get things moving again. He's known to be keen on Lord Carrington's idea that the first step should be to get Israel and the PLO to recognize each other's existence. I spoke to the Egyptian leader against a background of anti-Sadat chants from Arab demonstrators. How did the talks go today? How did the talks go today? Marvellous. I was uh, really uh, looking forward to meet with the Iron Lady. <laughs> How did you find her? Middle East problems dominated today's talks, but economic cooperation with Egypt was also discussed. And now for the main points of the news again with subtitles for the hard of hearing. A pleasure boat with 400 people on board has gone aground off South Wales. One person died of a heart attack as lifeboats and helicopters helped in the rescue operation. The Prince Ivanhoe is stranded about 100 yards off the Gower Peninsula near Port Einan. The three rail unions are still talking to the management of British Rail in a further round of pay talks. British Rail has revised its offer, but the unions are still pressing for the full 11% awarded to them last month by an independent tribunal. A strike by air traffic controllers in the United States has led to delays in transatlantic flights leaving Heathrow Airport. President Reagan has threatened the strikers with sacking if they don't resume work within 48 hours. The policeman whose vehicle hit and killed a young disabled man during the Toxteth riots last week has been identified. 
The policeman, who's a constable, has been interviewed and more eyewitnesses of the incident are wanted. Another prisoner has joined the hunger strike at the Mays prison near Belfast. Liam McCloskey, who's 25 and a member of the Irish National Liberation Army, refused breakfast this morning. Kevin Lynch, the hunger striker who died on Saturday, was buried at Dungiven in County Londonderry today. That's all for me. Newsnight will be on the air at 10.45.